when looking at the abstracts, there are some uh, quite interesting developments. So the first development is there are on many fields, there are improved scores in predicting trajectories of prognosis. For example, post-stroke epilepsy. When I went to medical school, they told me that only one or two percent of patients uh, with a stroke, they, they are going to have uh, seizures. That's not much. Now we know that 25 percent of patients after a stroke have at least one seizure in the first year after stroke. So post-stroke, um, epilepsy is a problem. They, they, this is associated with uh, memory problems, depression, and the slower rehabilitation. Some of them are drug resistant, and there are new scores uh, looking at these uh, patients. Um, what are the predictors of drug resistance in post-stroke epilepsy? The other one is uh, status epilepticus and non-convulsive seizures. So when we talk about non-convulsive status epilepticus, we usually have the EEG, which is very clear. There are the Salzburg EEG criteria, which are reliable, um, have a good test criterion, but there is a, a gray zone. And this is now addressed with perfusion imaging, CT or MRI, and there are quite interesting papers. Third, there are some um, very nice papers about, um, about genetic epilepsies and epileptic encephalopathies, which are worthwhile to look at. The phenotypic, um, uh, phenotypic characterization of single gene disorders are extremely important because the next step is, of course, finding an adequate treatment in these patients. There are new treatments, and uh, believe it or not, uh, the approach one drug fits all is still quite successful. There is Xenobamat, um, a drug originally developed in, in Korea, now marketed worldwide, and uh, Xenobamat has extremely good response rate in drug-resistant focal epilepsies. There are long-term results in safety and efficacy already available. Uh, and I think that's a major step forward for many of the patients. And the uh, last one I want to um, mention that a group from Australia pioneering the, the work that the patients really don't memorize their seizures precisely. Uh, in the first study by this group uh, around Mark Cook, uh, a patient reported two seizures. In fact, he had 200 and it can also be vice versa. And they developed for the first time um, implanted recordings, uh, which are uh, wearable for quite a long time. And the results here are shown, safety results, reliability results. And I think this is a major uh, step forward in treatment because what we also learn from these studies is the circadian um, rhythmicity. It's a, a daily seizures, uh, yearly seizures, annual or monthly seizures. These are rhythmics of appearance, which we previously did not uh, record in that way because seizure count is unreliable. 